All right. At this point, you've had the chance to work through a couple examples. You have the general idea of what substitution is all about. You also probably have this inclination that while a substitution is based on the, the inverse of the chain rule, that's not necessarily what you have to use it for. You actually can employ the substitution rule in many different applications. What it allows you to do is to look at a difficult integral, and where you're like. Yeah, I got no idea how to attack this. I got no no pre-scripted、uh, integral that I can plug in here. But it gives you a way of now playing with and manipulating the expressions, changing the variable with which you're differentiating. As we go through this quarter, we'll be introducing new kinds of substitutions, specifically trig substitution, that will take ugly complex statements and radically change them、um, using the idea of trigonometry. But specifically in this video, I just want to give you two more examples so that you can kind of see the world that gets unlocked with substitution. So in this first example right here, we have this rational expression that we've seen before.、Um, what would might make sense in this case for me to use the use substitution、um, of this denominator right here, specifically because I'll get two x when I differentiate this, and I have that x up there. Just want to model this real quick. So we'll let u equal one plus x squared. We'll differentiate with respect to x. By the way, if it wasn't clear before, the reason I'm differentiating with respect to x is so that I get this dx factor out here, this divisor here that will become a factor,、um, because that will give me this expression that I can then work to. to To swap out this dx with something else,、um, I mean to say I could differentiate differentiate with respect to any variable like t or something like that, but that wouldn't be useful because I want this dx to show up in this world.、Um, anyway, so if I if I multiply over that dx, I'll get this statement right here. And now, as previously stated,、uh, the two factor two here isn't a huge deal. I could divide that over and deal with it.、Um, but when I have this x plus dx, the important trick here is I can't do anything to to split up to to take away this plus one from the x. Like I can multiply or divide stuff really easily to this expression or inside that the integral, but I can't. Add things. I can't make this factor of one plus x, which makes things really tough. In fact, this u substitution won't work here. And I, I did want to model this as like an example of you should be trying this stuff. And the only way you can get really good at this is saying I'm going to try this u substitution, getting this point and being like, well, that sucked and that didn't work. But then you know for the future of like why it wouldn't work. And in this case, again, it's because this plus one. Now. With that said, I want to show you the simple algebra trick or simple arithmetic trick, actually, that will make this easier for you. Is that you can what you can do is just rewrite this expression using this addition right here. Specifically, on the side, I'll just say that one plus x over one plus x squared. This is exactly the same thing as one over one plus x squared plus x over one plus x squared. So what that allows me to do is to rewrite this expression inside the integral to be one over one plus x squared plus x over one plus x squared, and now I can apply the properties of integrals that says that if I have these these terms inside of an integral, I can split up the integral over those two terms. And, and what this really does, as you'll notice, it will give me two different integrals. With that, now I have two that I have to deal with. Um, but I can—it's taking care of that addition that was the awkward part up there in the numerator, right? So the part that I was just talking about dealing with is that one plus x. I don't have that anymore. What I'm going to do now is I'll just—I can integrate this right away. This is the、um, the derivative. This expression right here is the derivative of the tangent inverse. So I can actually anti-differentiate or integrate that. What I'm going to do over here is actually I'm going to use that same u substitution I was talking about, and I'll be able to attack it now because I don't have that one plus x. And so here, what I've done is simply rewrite that u substitution now, attacking specifically just this integral right here. All the same moves. What I did do and alluded to a second ago is I divided by by two or multiplied by one half. I always like writing it. As multiplying by one half instead of divided by two, they're both okay. I just like seeing this factor; it's easier for me to play with.、Um, but anyway, so I, I divided over that two over here. Now, what I can do is I can substitute this x dx 
with one half du,、um, and then I have this u substitution of one plus x squared. And so my next move would be this. As stated, this actually right here is the tangent inverse derivative. So, so the integral of this is the tan inverse of x plus c. Then over here, I'm still dealing with this integral.、Um, what I have now is all over u, and then I have a one half. Uh, du. All right. So then, what I'm going to do is just finish this off. Factor out this one half. This is going to give me a one over u du, which will end up being this natural log that we've already seen a couple times、uh, with this technique. But here we go. So we have the tan inverse of x plus c, that result of that first、uh, indefinite integral right there, and now we have one half. The integral of one over u du. This is just the natural log of the absolute value of u. So we'll get tan inverse of x plus c plus one half the natural log of u plus c. By the way, this is important, especially when I end up having these multiple integrals being added together. C. Represents any arbitrary constant. What I won't use here is c again because it's not like these are these need to be exactly the same value. They're just any random constant. So I'm just going to call this one k. It doesn't matter. I just know that c and k in this case are random constants that are being added on at the end.、Um, then what I'll get here is I'll, I'll replace this u with this one plus x squared. So I get that this is the tan inverse of x plus c. Plus one half the natural log of one plus x squared, the absolute value of that plus k. Finally, what I'm going to do just to clean this up, it, it, it's a bit redundant to have these two statements right here. So you have plus a random constant plus another random constant. We can combine two random constants just to, and say it's it's a it's another random constant. So anytime you have multiple of these arbitrary constants. You just clean it up, and I'll use a third variable here. I'll just use a capital C.、Um, this will be the tan inverse of x plus one half the natural log of one plus x squared, and I'll say plus big C. So just to quickly review on this, there's additional algebra tricks that you can do, specifically with these fractional or rational expressions. This is a good idea. You can't split up a fraction over the addition of the denominator because the nature of adding and subtracting fractions, right? We have to have a common denominator before we can add and subtract rational expressions together. But what I could do is take this and split it up over the addition or subtraction in the numerator, and that unlocks the issue that I was talking about earlier with when I differentiate. I'm not going to have these terms of the These, these kinds of expressions when I do this kind of u substitution, but if you split it up and then you can attack each part separately, there will be parts that hopefully are easier to integrate, and then other parts that you can use a u substitution to tackle. All right, and then the second example, we have a slightly different trick that I want to show you. This is related to the other example. It's the reason I put these together.、Um, but in this case right here, what I would try to do is some kind of u substitution. The awkward thing here is that if I, I chose this expression one plus x to the fourth to be my u, when I differentiate that to find that differential swap that I'm looking for, I would get four x to the third. The four we know isn't a big deal. That x to the third is a very big deal because I only have x to the one power right here. So that gets pretty tricky in how I do my substitution. Though this is a beautiful. Trick that I would say, how the heck would you know before? You probably wouldn't, but now that you've seen it, too bad. You've, you're watching the video now. You're gonna know this trick. You should be responsible for it. it. It's of this nature, and the trick here is knowing about that tangent inverse relationship and, and applying it here. But, but here's the here's the trick, just to get to it. What I would do is I'm going to just think about this down here. I'm going to rewrite this. You don't have to do this step, but just want to visually show this to show this as. X squared squared. So I'm thinking about x to the fourth of x squared squared,、um, and, and the nature of this is that if I have a variable like u squared, one plus u squared, that looks very similar to that tangent inverse derivative, and that's exactly what's going to happen right here. So what I'm going to do now with that little switch in my head, I'm going to let u equal x squared, and you might be seeing it right now. The beauty of that is that now when I differentiate this. 
with respect to x, I get 2x, x to the 1 power. It's going to help me swap out that. Um, when I get, I'll get du equals 2x dx. I'll divide 2 from both sides to give me 1 half du equals x dx. So then making my substitutions, I have my u substitution, which is pretty straightforward. I have my swap to swap out my differential here. And what I have now is these uh, swap out to, for 1 half du. And down here, I'm going to have 1 plus u squared. And just to make things a little bit nicer, I'm going to factor out this factor of 1 half. It's not necessary. You can just pull it out front and kind of think of it. But I think this really helps see what's going on here. In this case, now this indefinite integral, 1 over 1 plus u squared, this is the tan inverse of u. And so what I'll get here is 1 half times the tan inverse of u plus c. And then I just need to make sure that I plug back in my substitution for u here, ending up with 1 half tangent inverse of x squared plus c. So hopefully with these last two examples, you can see that with the substitution rule and with your growing understanding of these antiderivatives, you really can do some really radical tricks. And these last couple have, have been special and important. You just need to keep them in your toolbox of tricks. But again, for this one, it wouldn't make sense to do a u substitution with this. But if my u was x squared, then when I differentiate, it would interact well with this x is one part of that. But also knowing, hmm, what is squared in this term? Because this bottom, this denominator, kind of looks like the tan inverse derivative. Can I ma manipulate this? That's an important trick. And again, as said before, to get good at this, the really thing you, thing you have to do is actually try a bunch of U substitutions and realize what sucks, what doesn't work, and what does work, especially for you as you're investigating these certain problems. There are different kinds of substitutions that you actually can do. There's not just one roadmap for every problem. Um, and again, these are a couple of the many different tricks that you'll see and will need to develop as you move forward. Speaking of things for your toolbox, I want to add this property right here. This really has nothing to do with substitution. I've been thinking about where the heck to add these into the lectures, but I'm just going to throw it in there right now. We'll see this a little bit moving forward. This isn't super important. Like, don't put this on a big sticky note or take up a, ma a massive amount of your space in your notes, but you need to be aware of this, and it should be very obvious when you see the explanation. But in this case, we're talking about even and odd functions, and specifically when, when you're evaluating from negative a to a, so you're from the opposites of each other going through the origin. And that, that's important because of this symmetry. So an even function, if f is even, and this means that f of x equals f of negative x for every x value, when you integrate from negative a to a on that function, so you're on this span going through the origin from negative a to a, you can also calculate that as two times just going from zero to a. And, and hopefully this makes a lot of sense in this visual uh, an, uh, explanation right here. But the idea is if you have an even function, this statement right here of even function means they have exactly the same, the same grasp, but they're symmetric or over the y-axis, meaning this area right here is exactly the same as this area right here. You may argue that my, uh, my drawing doesn't make it look like that, but we know it's true. These would be the same. So if you're going to integrate from here to here, what this statement is simply saying is, well, since these are the same, just go from 0 to a and multiply by 2. Sometimes that's not going to be super obvious that you actually need that, but you'll see little tricks where it makes your life so much easier. Moving on to the second statement is, if f is odd, now this is the statement to where this value at a is the opposite at negative a. So what happens is these areas are actually completely opposite of each other. So we have this area from 0 to a in this case right here. And we have this area from, from, negative, uh, from negative a to 0. And the point is, anytime you have an odd function with, that follows this relationship right here, if you compute the integral from negative a to a of that function, it will always end up being 0. 